Hi everyone, this video walks through completing Packet Tracer Assignment 2.7.6, Implementing Basic Connectivity. This Packet Tracer Assignment is part of the CCNA Version 7 Intro to Networks curriculum. So in this lab, we've got two PCs, uh, PC1 and PC2. PC1 is connected to Switch1, Switch1 is connected to S2 or Switch2, and then Switch2 is connected to PC2. So <clears throat> we want to follow these steps to make our basic configuration. This is very similar to the lab that we completed previously uh, with the basic configuration. So hopefully you've completed that one because some of these directions don't go quite as into detail on that. So if we click on S1 here, we can start configuring. All right, and it has us uh, configure S1 with the host name of S1. Um, it wants us to set the Cisco for the console password class for the privileged exec mode password and it says an encrypted privileged exec mode password so if you are wondering should I use enable password to enable secret the encrypted should let you know you use enable secret so let's go ahead and get started here and I'm gonna drag this over so we can see both at the same time a little bit all right so we are going to do EN here, then we're going to do config T, and we are going to set a host name of S1. Um, we are going to use uh, lincon0 password Cisco, all lowercase, force it to log in with a login command. Then we're going to do enable secret class remember enable secret will set a password for you to uh, kind of block you from elevating to the privileged exec mode when you do uh, enable right it's going to ask you for another password remember in our previous lab we did enable password and enable secret enable secret will override it if you've got both set because enable secret is more encrypted and that's the one we usually use anyway we don't really need both right it's only going to use one or the other then it wants you to set a message of the day um, as authorized access only violators will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law so banner MOTD authorized access only violators will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law all right now we can test out to make sure these actually work before we save it if we exit out and exit once again all right so we are here we see our banner works there that popped up okay the authorized access only then we're going to use our first password which was Cisco remember that's our console password we see it takes us here we do enable or EN and then it asks us for another password that is class that's our enable secret class one now we also want to save so copy run start here enter enter so that saves all of our configurations because it wants us to save it as well now we want to repeat the same steps for S2 the only thing different is we want to set a host name of S2 everything else is kind of the same so let's go click on S2 here all right we're gonna press enter and we're going to do enable config t host name s2 and you will get to eventually do these in your sleep some of these line con zero a lot of times we even call this our housekeeping commands because they are kind of the things that we do on all routers and switches so line con password cisco login that sets our console line password then we do enable secret and it wanted us to use class then we are going to um, set a banner MOTD authorized uh, access only violators will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. That should scare somebody away. And again, the banners are not uh, read by Cisco grading engine. It's just pretty much whatever you want to put. It's not going to affect the connectivity or you logging in. Okay. Then we exit out and do a copy run start here. You could also do a do copy run start from configuration mode. Um, again, the do option, and I'll show you what that looks like. You could do that here. Do copy run start. 
enter, enter, even do show run, the do command will allow you to basically do the command from any mode. It's just kind of a little shortcut, but you got to know what you're doing there uh, to be able to do that. All right. So that gives us everything through there. Now we want to configure the PCs with the IP addressing. OK, now the switches themselves are not really uh, concerned with IP addressing themselves. So we will set a, um, a VLAN here, but we're not going to do anything else. So routers are usually ones concerned with IP addressing because and the PCs. Uh, but usually not switches. Switches are usually concerned with MAC addressing. But we are going to configure the PCs here manually. We don't have anything automatic. We have not learned DHCP yet. That actually comes in another class. But we will learn how to manually configure it here. Okay. So 192.168.1.1. So we're going to click on PC1. And there's always this beautiful table up here at the top that Cisco loves to put in here. It's great for organization. All right. So again, we click on the PC. We go to desktop, IP configuration, and we're going to type in that IP version 4 address there. It's 192.168.1.1. You hit the tab key. When the tab, when you hit the tab key, okay, it's going to suggest a subnet mask. Always make sure you double check it because it's not always right. Right now, this is correct, but it's not always right. We also don't need a default gateway here because we actually don't have a router involved um, to get outside of your network in later chapters we will learn why the default gateway is necessary DNS servers we haven't learned about that yet but DNS servers are also important in later chapters because if you're going to have outside internet connectivity it, the DNS server will actually sit somewhere either from your internet service provider or you can use Google's um, which is publicly known and it translates your URLs that you type in like ESPN.com or whatever Google.com, right? Whatever, uh, you know, CNN.com, FoxNews.com, whatever you want to type in and it translates it to an actual IP address sitting somewhere. So those are important in later chapters, but not right now. So we got our IP address and our subnet mask. We can close that out. We want to do the same thing for PC2. So you cannot have duplicate IP addresses on a network. So know that if you type in the same one, it is going to give you an error. You also notice they are on the same what we call subnet. We'll learn that later. That's that third number there for us in this particular one for this subnet mask. All right. But again, don't think too far ahead of us. We'll learn that in later modules. So that's how we set the IP address. OK. And then it asks us to test connectivity. So we're going to click on PC1. And we're going to try to connect to the actual switch one now we have not assigned a what we call a virtual because you can actually not set any ip addresses to any of the interfaces so if we hover over switch one here it has come on well it's not wanting to cooperate today anyway let's do this since we can type on it Show run. See, I've got 24 fast Ethernet ports and two gigabit Ethernet ports. We cannot assign any IP addressing to any uh, interface on a regular layer two switch like this one. We can for the VLAN. So this VLAN is a virtual interface that will allow the switch basically to be connected. So if you want to remote into your switch or something like that, you can give it an IP address here. All right. Otherwise, it will not take an IP address on any of the interfaces like a router will. So to configure that, and I'll let you know, you can try to ping it. It's going to fail, all right, because we haven't even set it yet. So if you try to go here, go to command prompt on the PC and do a ping, which will test the connectivity to see if it's working. It'll send a packet out and see if it'll get it back. That one was 1.253, I believe. Yep. You hit enter and you're going to see it says it's pinging it with data which basically means it is trying to go from this PC to this switch and back. All right. So it says request timed out and it's going to time out every single time because we have not set it on that switch yet. So it can't contact it and it's going to say request is time out and it's going to say four packets sent and four not received. OK, so four sent, zero received, four lost, 100 percent lost. That's not good. We want to see all of them be received. All right. So again, we need to configure S1 and S2 with that virtual uh, interface called a VLAN to be able to do that. So to do that, we set 
virtual interface VLAN 1. We set the IP address and the subnet mask, and then we type no shutdown for it to turn on. So let's see how that actually works here. So we're going to go in configuration mode, and we're going to type in interface, or you can do INT, VLAN 1. Okay. That's kind of like the default VLAN here. Then we're going to do IP add or IP address if you want to do the full command there. 192.168.1.253, a space. And if you do a question mark, you can see here that you're going to need the subnet mask. So it won't let you do it without the subnet mask. Okay, so 255.255.255.0. Then we hit enter. Okay, no shut or no shutdown. Either one will work and you will see it turn on. That is a good sign. It says change state to up. Okay. Now, if you do exit and do show run, you will actually see that be configured right here. Okay. Again, that's a good thing. We then want to go to switch to and do the same thing. All right. So now we are going to go do the same thing on switch to. So let's click on switch to. And we're already in configuration mode. If not, go ahead and type in config T. All right, we're on switch two, and we're going to do interface VLAN one, same way, or INT, either one. IP add, and this one is 192.168.1.254, 255.255.255.0. Well, I can tell you is all these computers are on the same network. So switches do not divide, or sorry, same subnet. Switches do not divide stuff into separate subnets. If you're on a different network or a subnet, you actually have to involve a router. So all these IP addresses play nicely together, in, in other words. We'll learn that later uh, in future modules. Type in no shutdown. That turns it on. And again, you can do a do show run, and you will see it come up right there. Okay, interface VLAN 1, what its IP address is, and everything. So let's go back to PC1 now and see if we can contact that again. You can press the up button and your command will come right back. We press enter. Sometimes the first one will fail and then the rest of them will start working. So it says request timed out and voila, the reply starts. Now if we do it again, up arrow again, usually all four of them will work the second time. Sometimes it just takes that first one to find its way, all right, before the rest of them start following suit right so that is a zero percent loss that is awesome so now let's try to contact pc2 to switch to so let's click on pc2 go to command prompt and we're going to ping 192.168.1.254 hit enter so we expect the first one maybe to fail but then after that it should start working and it does voila and if we retry that again or refire it we should see good replies. Now, let's see if we can ping all the way across the network from one PC to the other. So we know we can get from here to here, and that's what pinging does. It allows us to kind of break down step by step. Okay, can I get to switch one? Can I get to switch two? Then can I get all the way to the other side and back, right? So from PC one, let's see if we can ping switch two, which was 192.168.1.254. All right, so it's the first one timed out, but then all the rest of them work. I can refire it again. So now I know I can get from PC1 to switch one and PC1 to switch two. Now let's see if I can go all the way from PC1 to PC2. So ping 192.168.1.2, I believe, was PC2's address. Let's double check. It was. All right. Again, we're on PC1 here. So let's see, and voila, we get a reply. So we now know that we can go all the way across here. So if we would have tried, a lot of people, what they do is try like sending the Hail Mary, right? All the way across. So say, hey, can PC1 go ahead and ping PC2? If not, then they back it up one level at a time. So nope, that's not working. All right, now let me at least try to get to switch to. Can't get to switch to? Okay, can I at least get to switch one? So that way you can isolate where the problem is. Now, another thing I'll tell you is just because you can go one way does not mean that you can go the opposite way. So let's try going ahead and pinging all the way from PC1, I mean, sorry, from PC2 here to PC1. So you need to click on PC2 and then ping the address of PC1. 
and we get a good reply. So that means we can also go all the way from here to there and here to there, right? So that is a awesome thing here. Our network is completely working from end to end. Uh, to check our completion, that's always important in Cisco, right? We got 100%. If you don't, then you can go to check results and see line by line what may have went wrong there. So we have completed this uh, configuring network from end to end. Um, make sure you saved your configurations with a uh, copy run start. If you have anything misconfigured, you can always do a show run to see what may have went wrong in your lab as well. But again, that completes our lab assignment for this one.